All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day 55 of Autodesk Fusion. All right, we're going to be making some bevel gears today where one gear causes another gear to rotate. Now, I am asking Fusion to do quite a bit, so if I do this uh, automate joints function or command, it tends to, to skip a little bit, but it does work nonetheless. So let's go ahead and start a new design. We're going to create a sketch. I'm going to hit C on my keyboard and go ahead and make a 100 millimeter circle. And we're going to kind of eyeball what our gear tooth looks like for this video. So what I'm going to do, actually, let's make this circle a little bit smaller. Let's do a 50. There we go. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit and let's make our gear tooth here. So I'm going to do about a 45 degree angle on my gear tooth. Uh, I found out to be the most helpful. So what I did is I'm using a lot of hot keys with my left hand. So I use C for circle, L for line, T for trim. And now I'm going to click on create and circular pattern. So we're going to click on these two. I don't want the whole circle. So let's deselect all of that and click on these two objects right here. I'm going to then click on center point. Click on the center and then plug in as many teeth as I can fit in there. So under here under quantity, sometimes you have to scroll down on here. And I'm going to bump this up and I think I can get away with about 12. Can I do 15? 15 looks all right. Here's what you don't want to do when you do circular pattern. If you see this, my, my geometry is starting to repeat itself. You get what I call these little triangles of death right here um, because you run into a problem with geometry. So making sure when you do circular pattern that your geometry doesn't overlap itself and create a bunch of small shapes in between. So I'm going to bump that down to 15, click OK, and then we're looking good. So I'm going to click on Finish Sketch. And then I'm going to go ahead and extrude this. Now, what I'm going to, the reason I'm extruding this now and not putting that denominator diameter for the center axle inside yet is because we're going to taper right here. If we had a, a hole in there to taper, it would actually cause me to have some problems. And so we're going to do, let's try a, let's do a negative 45 degree taper. And let's go taper around again, around through the inside. There we go. So here's what we got so far. Looking okay. We're going to operation, new component, click OK. And now I'm going to click on create a sketch. And now let's make that center, similar diameter. Let's go ahead and make that <clears throat> 10 millimeters. Hit finish sketch. And what we're going to do is we're going to extrude, cut that through, call that done. So now I've got my first gear right here. Alrighty, now let's go ahead and create a sketch and let's make that axle. So I'm going to hit P on my keyboard for project and let's project that circle. Just in case I forgot the dimensions of that hole, you can just project that geometry on there. Click OK, finish sketch and extrude. So I'm going to go ahead and extrude this symmetrically and click on new component. If I were to make this a join, it would be kind of as an axle welded to my gear, and that's not quite what I want. Looking OK. So component one, we're going to call this gear. Component two, we're going to call this axle. Alrighty. Now, nothing is quite set where it needs to be yet, so what I'm going to do is make a copy and then start to do some grounding. So I'm going to click on Move Copy, and I want to copy the components. And if you watch here, what's going to happen is when I click Create a Copy, Gear and Axle gets re replicated, but now they have the number 2 next to them. So that way I know they're the same thing. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to click Turn on my Origin Files, and what I want to do is rotate this thing about let's see if I can do this set the pivot to right here and what that's going to do it should um, 
bar out, but I, I'm doing too much one time. Let's just do this again the easy way. Let's do move copy, components, select these two objects to create a copy. I'm going to go ahead and move these over and rotate 90 degrees. And let's go ahead and line them up while we're at it. So when it comes to this lining up, if you've done your gears correctly, they should have a little bit of a gap right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down just a hair back. And bring it forward just a hair. That way my bevel gears overlap correctly. If you have the dimensions and you set that tooth dimension correctly up, you won't have this gap problem I'm having. I'm just kind of eyeballing the gears from here. I'm going to click OK. Now, what's already happened, we're lined up and our situation looks okay. So what I'm going to do then now is I'm going to uh, do assemblies and we're going to start to make assemblies. However, I don't want anything to move. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on axle. Oh, there we go. Try that again. Right click and ground it. I'm going to go ahead and ground both of these axles. That way they don't move. If I try to drag them, they don't move. So that way what I can do now is I can do assemblies for joints. Let's assemble this joint right there. And for our motion, let's do a revolute. And that looks okay. We're looking good. If you noticed, I didn't need to move where that gear was because when I did that um, for that axle, I did a symmetrical extrusion, so that way there's a plane, a work spot for me to work right in the middle of that axle. Alrighty, now what we're going to do is we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and join the other. Okay, so let's do the center of that with the center of that. Looks all right. Now, if you didn't do some of those setups, you might have some problems here with the, the constraints and getting things to line up quite right. It'll work totally fine. You're just going to have to adjust where you put those pieces at. Alrighty. Now, how to make my gears work the way they're supposed to. Right now, they're kind of going through each other. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go under Assemblies and then click on Enable Contact Sets. Now, Contact Sets is a way for me to tell Fusion these pieces cannot go through each other. So if I right-click and I enable All Contacts, that means no objects, no components, which I've made here, can go through each other. And that way, when I start to move one, we now force the other ones to move. Alrighty. Now, because my gears aren't exactly matching up perfectly, we Fusion is doing a lot of heavy thinking on making this gear interaction work. And so this might work a little bit more smoothly in a different software program. But um, here's what we got so far. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there's we go. We've made bevel gears. So for tomorrow's video, I'm actually going to do bevel gears again, but do them in a little bit of an easier way, at least from what I've found so far. All right, guys, that'll be it. If you have any questions, let me know, and I will see you on the next video.